What is going on, everyone? Leon checking in, and we're at it again with another episode. In today's content, we're going to be demonstrating how to import media into Cyberlink PowerDirector 365 for Windows PC. I'm also going to try to demonstrate some helpful tips that will help you along in this process and hopefully simplify your video content creation. Now, if you are watching on YouTube and are looking for more content related to this topic, you can find it on the newly created playlist CyberLink PowerDirector 365 for Windows PC. And for reference, hardware that I'm using for this tutorial includes the HP Omen 16 Gaming Laptop PC, as well as the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 4. That being said, as always, you can find items mentioned or shown in this content by clicking on the Amazon storefront link in the description below. All things said, let's go ahead and get into it. So again, here we are on the HP Omen 16, and I'm going to connect my Z Fold 4 to this PC via a USB-C cable. Now, because I do have a microphone plugged in, we have the HyperX Quadcast right there. You are not going to hear the audio notification that you would get if you normally connect a device like a smartphone to a PC. But once our device is connected, we're going to grab our mouse and we're going to move down to our toolbar here. And we're going to look for the folder icon. This is going to be File Explorer and we're going to click on it. Now I'm going to take this folder and pull it to the left side of the display. We can make it half screen. This is a feature that I really like. And now we can get to work. So we're going to move to this navigation tree on the left side of this window. We're going to look for our device. And in this situation, mine is called Leon Z Fold 4. I'm going to click on it. It's going to somewhat refresh the page and show us a new option. And we're going to look for internal storage and click on that. And then we're going to have all these different folders. We're going to look for DCIM, click on that as well. And then we're going to look for camera, click on this too. And this is going to load up. So there is a little bit of navigation to get to where you need to be here. Now, while this is loading, I'm going to pull this folder out just a little bit more to make this demonstration a little bit easier. You can see we have this status bar at the top. It's going to fill with green. It's kind of like a fuel gauge. And you can see this takes a little bit of time. And as this is loading up, what I do, and there we go, it's loaded up. I do wanna demonstrate multiple ways to do things here. So first, I prefer to organize my items. I am ideally using the newest items that are created in my camera and sometimes they don't always show up at the top in this situation they did but if we want to see our newest items at the top we're going to do a right click with our mouse and then we're going to do sort by and then we're going to do created and this would ideally put the oldest items at the top or the newest items at the top. Now, again, we were showing the newest items first, which sometimes doesn't happen. And because I did this, we're showing the oldest items first. So I'm going to do that right click again, and then we're going to do sort by, and then click on created. And there we go. You can see my newest items are showing at the top. Now, there is a way to select multiple items. For this demonstration, I'm going to select a video file a picture file, and then another video file. And most people know that you can press and hold down that left mouse button and highlight this way. But if you are looking for an alternative method, we can press and hold shift and use the right arrow key. And we can highlight several items this way. Now, of course, we want to import these three items into CyberLink PowerDirector 365. But first, we have to import them into the computer. We haven't actually done that yet. And this is where a little bit of organization comes into place. So we're going to look for this option here, this PC. You can see we have, again, all these subfolders underneath. And we're going to look for documents and we're going to expand. Now, the reason you don't want to click on just documents is you can see that the page with our files goes away. So you don't want to do this. So again, we're going to go back to our phone. We're going to click on DCIM camera. We're going to wait for this to populate once again. And again, we want to import these items to the computer. So we're going to expand the document section. 
and I've created a separate folder for YouTube. This is what I recommend because it makes it easier to just organize your content. And you can see we have other subfolders. We have audio library, channel images, content. Ideally, I place all the content that I do want to import into the computer into my content folder. And I've created a new section 2023 for projects that are happening this year. And I want to create a new folder just for these items for this project. So I'm going to do a right click on 2023. We're going to look for show more options, click on that. Then we're going to look for new and then folder. And then we can name this. We're going to name this test. That seems to do the job. And then we're going to go back to our items. They may have been deselected. So again, we're going to select them. And then I'm going to press and hold and drag it to the test folder. Now, depending on how many items you have, this could take some time. But because these are very short videos and one picture, this is going to happen very quick. But this completes the process for importing our files to the computer. Again, they're not imported to CyberLink Power Director 365 yet. So that is the next step. We're going to close this window. And I'm going to show you several ways to open CyberLink Power Director 365. So again, we can go down to the toolbar. I recommend placing these items in the toolbar since you're going to be accessing them fairly often if you are a content creator. Now we've got two options here. We've got the CyberLink Application Manager and CyberLink Power Director 365. You can just go with this option if you prefer. It opens CyberLink Power Director 365 directly. But you can click on the CyberLink Application Manager, which is what we'll do just to demonstrate. And I'm going to move my camera down. So here we have all the applications. So you have PowerDirector 365, PowerDirector 365 Screen Recorder, and all the other applications if you have downloaded them. And you can open PowerDirector 365 by clicking on Open. But the alternative method will be going back down to the toolbar and clicking on CyberLink PowerDirector 365. This takes a moment to load up here. And this is going to be basically our main screen. We have two options. We have Timeline Video Editor and Slideshow Creator. For this tutorial, we are doing video editing. So we're going to click on that option. It's going to load up a little bit more here. And now we can finally import our media. This is a bit of a process and this may seem overwhelming at first, but once you've done this quite a few times, it's really not that bad. It comes naturally. So to import our media that we dragged to that folder that we showed earlier, we're going to look for file, click on that. We're going to get a drop down menu and we're going to look for the import option. Now you can import media several different ways. We can do it by just importing a media file or we can import a media folder. Now, as you remember, we did create a folder earlier, but to demonstrate, I'm going to show how you can import just a media file. So we're going to click on that option. We're going to look for that folder we created. And I'm going to go a little bit slower than I normally do. That way you can see what's going on. And we're going to select one of our videos. So it's going to import there, take a moment. You can see we have that video imported, but then we have the alternative method, which I recommend. I don't know why you would want to import media one at a time. I would think it's more convenient to import the whole folder, which is what I normally do. So again, we're going to go file, import, media folder. And you can see we've already got the folder selected, but if it wasn't, we can run through here. Again, it's in the content folder 2023 and then test and then select folder. And it's nice, too, because it shows how many items are in that folder. And then we do have other media we can import. And I do have an audio library for my videos. So we're going to import that as well. So again, go to file import and I'm going to do media folder once again, because I have quite a few audio tracks. And I know that these are going to be in my YouTube folder and I created a folder just for audio. So it's super easy to import into this project. We're going to click on it and then select folder. Again, it's going to show how many items are in that folder. That's a really nice feature. But along with this, there is a nice way to organize all these items. So you can see that we have this navigation bar 
And right now we have the option, all media selected. It shows an icon, it's got like movie film and then a music icon. But we can also show videos only, we can show images only or music. This makes it a little bit easier to find what you are looking for when you are working your project. So for example, if I click on videos only, it's going to show only our video files. And although we did import that test folder, which included a picture, when we click on it, it's only going to show the video files in that folder. We can also back out of here by clicking on this icon up one level. And then again, if we move on here, we can click on images only. We're only going to have our images shown. And if we are looking for our audio only, we're only going to have our audio shown. Now, before we do wrap up here, you may have wanted to do this at the beginning, but if you didn't do this yet, you want to save this project. So you want to click on file and then save project as. And I like to make sure that it's saved to the desktop. And then we are going to name this test. And then we can click save. And that's going to save everything from this tutorial. So in the next video, we can continue on from here. So that is it for today's content. If you enjoyed it and found it useful, please leave a like. If you're watching on YouTube and have any questions or comments, as always drop those down below and I'll do my best to answer them. Now there are three ways you can support the content. The first way is to click on the Amazon storefront link in the description below. There you'll find items that I have bought or would buy and anything you buy from the storefront does support the content. The next way you can show your support is just by sharing this content with someone who might enjoy it or find it useful. And the last way you can show your support is just by clicking the subscribe button. Now liking and subscribing are important because those are ways to vote on whether you like the content. Liking and subscribing are also important for new viewers and listeners. If new viewers and listeners see likes and subscribers, they're going to think that the content is helpful, worth watching, and listening to. And as always, thanks for watching and may the universe flow in your favor. And until next time, Leon check in out. Yeah. Yeah.